we are back with season 26 of Big Brother episode 26, actually. I can't believe we're on episode 26 already. At least I think we are, but, like, it just, it seemed like just yesterday I was reviewing episode, like, 9. Like, I still re remember episodes 1 and 2. Like, I, I can't believe we're at 26. Like, it's gotta be, like, 40 episodes, but I guess it's, like, 3 a week, so it still just don't feel like... It just don't feel like, like, this season is going by so quick. But the beginning, like, the pre-jury phase was so much fun. And, like, time flies when you're having fun. But anyway, let's get to this episode review. The episode before was the Sunday episode where Chelsea won HOH. Not really many notable things. She went the easy route with nominating Chemo, which is so funny because she just kept Chemo. And that's something that we did learn was that it was a split decision, which it seemed out of nowhere, where... Kimo's speech really turned two people, which we rarely ever see in Big Brother. I don't think we, I don't remember ever seeing that. Mackenzie literally changed her vote while talking to Julie. And Chelsea changed her vote. But Chelsea seemed pretty confident that Kimo was leaving. I don't know, but let them tell it. Kimo was supposed to leave. They changed their votes because of the speech. And Kimo stayed. And, I mean, I guess. But Chelsea just immediately put him back on the block. She put him against Angela. She's wanting to nominate Angela. That's her strategy is to play the middle. Because as she said in this episode, it's the trio versus pretty much everyone else. And then Angela's in the middle that no one really cares about. No offense to her, but that's just how they feel. So she wants to get Angela out so she, Chelsea, can stay with playing in the middle. But she is putting Kimo as a pawn, so it's kind of weird for her to, you know, like, I feel like the trio should know that, you know. But the trio's number one ally outside the trio is Chelsea. And to be honest, I feel like some of them value Chelsea, well, mainly T-Core. T-Core, I feel, values Chelsea more than she values probably Rubina and Kimo. So this episode, we see the fallout from that, and Chelsea says exactly what I just said. She really wants to focus on getting Angela out the house, and we see, like, a scene with Angela and Mackenzie talking, which is very similar to the scene we saw last week when, McK when Angela and Leah was talking. It seems like some foreshadowing's going on. This is the veto episode. <laughs> like, I just feel like they play these segments just so that uh, we'll see, like, they had a little bit of a talk. They had, they're they gaining their relationship, you know, <laughs> just so it's not out of nowhere when someone used a veto on Angela. They did it with Tucker, they did it with Leah, and now it feels like they're doing it with Mackenzie, but I guess we shall see. So we see a meeting in the HOH room with, like, Chelsea, Cam, L Mackenzie, Quinn, and they were talking about, like, if the veto's used, and Leah's name comes up, and Quinn is shaking in his boots. Quinn is so in love with Leah, it is ridiculous. But I feel like we all knew that. But, like, she's giving him nothing back. And, like, she even, like, hurt his game last week. But, like, he's still fighting so hard for her. And I re the reason why I say this is because after this meeting, he goes right to Leah. It's funny in the Big Brother house where you just see, see people have a conversation and you see somebody just go to someone else and retell that conversation. It's so funny because that's what Quinn did. He went from that room to right to Leah and told her everything that's going on. Because the people in the HRH room were scared that Leah might use the veto on Angela and then they're screwed. So they say if, if Angela comes off the block or if Chemo comes off the block, they want to put Leah up. Quinn knew that. He went and told Leah. Leah said that she would not use it on Angela. Angela kind of already knew that. It, it became a whole thing. But Quinn feels like they still kind of want to put Leah up. And we see, you know, we get a lot of, you know, random segments on these type of episodes. We see the segment with the trio. Actually, I don't think Rubina was in there. So it's just Chemo and T-Core. And we see Angela. And this is funny. Because I remember when Angela... Uh, on episode one and two, when Angela did her little intro, she said that she's a party. Like, she's 51. 51's not that old, first of all. But she says she still parties and stuff like that. And, like, she seems like she would. So, anyway, uh, she says that, I think Chemo says, uh, finale night, we're taking shots. You know, we're all meeting each other's family. We're all taking shots. And Angela, this is when she actually sounded old and she kind of sounded like a Karen. She says, yeah, I'll do the pot, too. And it, I'm surprised they put this on TV, first of all. The pot. Like, we can do the pot. Like, so Angela smokes, uh, or at least wanted to smoke. <laughs> I mean, I always want... Sorry, guys, my camera ran out of storage. I feel like this happens all the time at this point. I really need to clear off my camera space. But anyway, I always wonder with these house guests, like, who smokes? So, I mean, in this house, who do y'all think smokes? Uh, I think Cam. I think Cam would smoke. 
Uh, I feel like Quinn definitely smokes. Uh, let me not let, let me know who y'all think smokes, but definitely Cam and Quinn. I can see smoking, especially Quinn. I feel he looked like a major stoner that I went to high school with. But anyway, <laughs> we see this meeting with Quinn and McKenzie. They talk. Quinn lets us know in his diary room that he knows what's going on with Chelsea. Chelsea wants to play the middle. She wants Angela out because Angela has no allies. Yada yada, which is kind of weird because then Quinn talks about wanting chemo out. But actually, I guess it's not weird because Quinn wanted chemo out last week on his HOH. So it makes sense. He kind of convinces McKenzie. And like I said in Big Brother, you have one conversation, you go tell someone else. So McKenzie had this conversation. Then she went immediately and told Chelsea, me and Quinn want to get uh, chemo out. And Chelsea's like, oh, really? This becomes a whole thing. So <laughs> Chelsea kind of says she's down for it. But Chelsea wants to play the middle. So of course she's down for it. Uh, then we see this scene with Cam talking about his tattoos with... T Core and Chelsea, and basically his tattoos all mean something. It's all about his life. Chelsea's crushing on Cam hard. I hope I said Cam, by the way. But yes, Chelsea's crushing on Cam hard. She said, I love tattoos. <laughs> My thing is, if you like him, why don't you just go for it? Like, just at this point, just let him know. Like, just, it just seems too much. Like, her crushing on him and getting jealous of all this stuff. Like, just go for it. Y'all are in the house. Like, I salute you for not wanting to show man's, but everyone sees it, and, I mean, just go for it. We get to the veto player pick. So we got the three nominees. Oh, actually, there's not three nominees. The two nominees playing, which is Chemo and Angela. We have the HOH, Chelsea, and then three people selected by random choice, and we get Mackenzie, we get Rubina, and we get Quinn. So I'm just going to get right to it. <laughs> Chelsea wanted to throw this competition because she said that only way she'll win is if the her nominees are in. Because she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to become like a target. She already got the HOA. She don't want to get the veto in the same week. She doesn't want to be winning competitions like that. We get to Otef. It's a raccoon. Even though I could have swore he called himself a panda, so I was a little bit confused. But anyway, it's garbage everywhere. That's the theme of the HOA of the veto. They call it digital trash, and they get splashed. Literally, they're on their little disc, and then boom like goo or slime or whatever like it just like drops on them so it's the veto otev is the most famous challenge in big brother it's the it's number one everyone wants to, well maybe the wall the wall and otev are like the wall is number one hoh otev is number one veto so everyone's excited for this uh angela wanted to play quinn wanted to play quinn had a strategy already all this stuff the question is who did not compete in the new rule HOH? I forgot that I wrote it down. New rule. I remember liking that HOH a lot. Uh, who didn't get to compete? That's already evicted. And pretty much everyone went for Tucker. Except McKenzie, which they did a good job hiding McKenzie's. Because <laughs> McKenzie didn't say it out loud. t Core says she knew that the answer was Cedric and she watched everyone throw Cedric's disc around. Quinn had a strategy. He just, he, and he was making it known. He literally had all these damn names he just was gathering them up and i'm like could you be any more obvious uh chelsea couldn't find one <laughs> so they went up in this order angela mckenzie rubina quinn and then it went to commercial and i'm like well i already knew the result i'm pretty sure like a lot of people know the result but it's like all right this is obvious that why would you go to commercial during the first round <laughs> It was down to like Quinn and, um, or I'm sorry, it was down to Chemo and Chelsea. And Chemo got one, went up, and Chelsea just like gave up. She didn't even get a a, a digital trash. She just went up to the third disc. And everyone said their answer, and like they were so confident. And then Mackenzie had a different one, and Mackenzie won because the answer was Cedric. And I knew it was Cedric because the first round. Uh, I honestly forgot who got out in that first round. So I was wondering why everybody was picking Tucker when I watched the feeds. But everyone picked Tucker because he was eliminated in the first round. Him and McKenzie did not get a group of three. Cedric didn't play at all because he was with Chelsea uh, dressed up as little SD cards or whatever it was. So McKenzie won one round of Otev. That's a shame. It's embarrassing. Quinn even said it. He said at least it's history though, so whatever. Otev calls them dumbasses, as he should. This review is going to be really quick because there wasn't really much left. That competition was one round. So, 
we see the scene with Angela. She couldn't sleep, quote unquote. She snuck around the house just listening in on doors. She listened in on literally nothing. These people were just outside, and it just so happened to be the trio, as in T Core, Rubina, Chemo, and then the duo, as in Quinn and Leah. And he, she just went to Chelsea, told Chelsea that they formed something, they solidified it, just completely made it up. Great gameplay by Angela, though. Great gameplay. Because Chelsea ate it up. And then Chelsea told Mackenzie, as we always see, like, you tell one person one thing, they go tell someone else. And so she tells Mackenzie. Mackenzie tells Quinn, like, yeah, I think, because they come up with the idea to use the veto on Angela and put Quinn out. Mackenzie tells Quinn, because Mackenzie says it's the jury phase of the game, so she needs to keep her relationships good. Quinn goes right to Chelsea to talk to Chelsea. This pretty much didn't really go anywhere. They called Mackenzie over, and they, he says that he was throwing Leah under the bus, but he really wasn't. But then Mackenzie goes with Chelsea into the HOH room. That's another thing. When Quinn got Chelsea, they left out the HOH room. I thought that was weird. But anyway, Mackenzie and Chelsea went into the HOH room, into the bathroom, and they started talking, and they're like, who should we put up, Leah or Quinn? How about neither? Just keep it the same and give it to Angela. That was Chelsea's best strategy, in my opinion. But whatever, she wants to put up Quinn or Leah, I guess. Uh, it looks like we're going to be losing Quinn, unfortunately. I don't want Quinn to win. I'm not the biggest Quinn fan or anything like that, but I would have liked him to see him go a little bit further. Not much further. <laughs> like, maybe get evicted. I want to see him in a double eviction, for sure. I would like to see him compete in a double eviction, but that ain't going to happen. It looks like he's going to be evicted. It's... They shut the episode off before the veto's used, which I, that threw me off. How the episode was going, I looked at my phone, and it was like 8.59. I was like, oh, they're not going to do the ceremony, which, like, that just came out of nowhere. It seemed kind of pointless. Like, why not? Like, just put it out there. But that's it for this video, guys. I will be back, not tomorrow, but the day after, because tomorrow I actually have a wrestling show for IWR. Y'all see the hat? I'm wrestling there tomorrow in Monroe, Michigan. I'm going to get home super late, so I'm not going to be able to watch the episode. I'm going to try to avoid spoilers, and then I'm going to watch the episode and tomorrow and review it, or the day after tomorrow, and review it then. So until next time, y'all, be sure to leave this video a like, comment, subscribe, share it on all forms of social media, and I will catch y'all later.